Hi, this is Maciek from DCX and I would like to show you how to prepare your ASIC miners for the immersion cooling uh, system. It's uh, uh, lots of questions uh, how to do it properly and actually that's a very simple process. It doesn't take much time. There you go. I will show you how to do it. And it's a, a little bit different procedure uh, depending on, uh, on the miner uh, if that was previously used on an uh, air cooling environment or not. But basically, the steps are, uh, are, uh, are more or less the same. So you can see uh, I already removed lots of the fans here. Uh, if you will see here, uh, that's one tube miner. It's actually X7 miner. Uh, but here, if you can see here, there is also a uh, con 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 closer and, uh, and I will show you. It's uh, as, as 15s and uh, as you can see, it's already prepared for the, for the immersion. As you can see here, lots of com components, all those fans which are generating lots of noise. Uh, are waste already. All those panels are removed. Everything which uh, actually uh, constrains the flow through the, uh, through the miner. So that's waste already. That will not uh, make that mining unbearable anymore. Uh, and uh, this, is, uh, the, the, this will be not uh, used uh, in your system. So you have a single tube miner here. And so what we need to do is we need to first uh, uh, remove the hash boards. And if, if that was used previously, if that was used previously, you should uh, first uh, clean it from the uh, uh, with the compressed air. So there's lots of uh, uh, lots of that at the very beginning, especially if that was uh, already used. Simple compressor will do. So you you just take your miner, remove the parts which you will not need to to use. All those fans, all those baffles, and you just. Clean it very carefully, and you do it very carefully, carefully and thoughtfully through the through all the miners' components. So you remove all the dust you can you can find. That was all already cleaned, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, if you, uh, I'm already have a little bit, uh, little bit uh, uh, contaminated uh, um, hands, but uh, gloves. But uh, if you're just using that that method and you see if that's if that requires cleaning if that's still uh, there is some residue yes that should be cleaned uh, a little bit more but uh, it's not complicated as you can see what i'm doing right now is i'm just removing the hash boards from the from the system simple as that uh, i assume that hash board has been already already cleaned so i'm cleaning it even more with the compressed air We'll make all the dust, everything which is, uh, which is left. And then I go to the next uh, stage of cleaning. So cleaning with the brush and with the alcohol. Yep, we use alcohol not only for drinking, but also for the, for the cleaning. There you, there you go. There is a EPA alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. It's dielectric. It doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt your, it will not hurt your, your equipment. It will not damage it. And as you can see, we are doing that with the, good idea would be to use uh, s some of those alcohol as a first bath then remove that alcohol as you can see here with the with the uh, maybe from from that side, side uh, that side will be easier to see uh, you, that's already used and that goes to, to to filtering if you will filter it it will lose all that all that contamination here that was probably the first cleaning that was the second oh, that was first cleaning as you can see with the color that was the second cleaning and that is third cleaning here, right? And it can be reused multiple times. Some of those will evaporate, but but uh, not not that much. And the process is very simple. Um, maybe from that side, process is very simple. What you do is you, you just use the alcohol. You just take the container. It can be a plastic container also. It doesn't have to be big glass. Uh, and but it's easy to you know to to clean after the operation. And then uh, you take the brush and you just do like this. You just do, do the detailed cleaning of the, each of the hash board. Just clean it, then, then wash your brush and then clean it again and again and again and again. As, uh, as you will be just satisfied with the you know, cleanliness of the, of the, of the minus of the, of the hash boards. And you can do it, uh, you know, multiple times. Uh, if you will take the brush with the uh, long hair, uh, then you will reach all the, all the, uh, all the gaps here between the fins of the, uh, of the, and channels of the heat sinks. And 
you, you do the you, you do the same from from the one side, then you do the same same from the other side. Some of our customers are using also ultrasonic cleaners. It's not really required. It's of course depends on on the, how much your uh, your miner is is uh, is dirty. As I said, you take white glove, you just check it, and I, if that's st still clean after you know trying, it's fine, right? It's uh, it's enough already. So you clean it, you install it in the, the enclosure. Of course, the enclosure must be also uh, also cleaned because we will be still using it. We don't have to actually. So if you like to uh, retrofit your miner uh, in the uh, in the very detailed way, uh, then you don't have to you use the enclosure because the enclosure is used with the, all the miners as a head spreader, and you don't need to sp spread the heat through the uh, through the aluminium housing. That can also go to the you know to waste. Okay, and, uh, and you just need to have the hash boards put very, uh, very, in very dense manner in the, into the enclosure system. It doesn't require, require you know, all that housing. But for the sake of convenience, we can leave it, right? So you then install it, you put it somewhere, let it dry in the you know, ventilated place, and simple as that. What uh, you will ask probably what's about the fans, all right? So uh, some of the miners will have the uh, in firmware which will be provided by the uh, experts which are overclocking the uh, those miners, and they will uh, they have the immersion version. I believe for that for for multiple miners we have uh, available the are uh, already three or four or five different. Uh, uh, immersion firmers, right? So those guys will help you. Uh, you can take also the firmware from the mm, from the manufacturer. For example, uh, what's Miner is providing for free the immersion version of the firmware. It's no, 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 nothing fancy. You just uh, give them waiver, and they will provide you with the uh, with the immersion cooling uh, mm, firmware. It doesn't allow overclocking, as far as I know, but uh, it will work perfectly, and you will not pay pay a dime. Uh, and uh, if you don't have that firmware, if you are not, you know, prepared uh, by the, you know, if you don't have any custom firmware, what you can use is something which is called fan spoofer or fan emulator. There you go. So you take that small circuit like this, and it's nothing, you know, uh, nothing very, very, very special. You just, you just take it and. You just install that in place of the fans. There you go. And uh, it should work as designed from the very beginning. There you go. One per one single fan. So you need two for most of the of the of the single tube miners. And that's already prepared for the machine cooling system. Simple fast poofers which we can also uh, which you can which you can also provide and they are also available on the within the multiple sources after that uh, see here after that you just place the miner carefully into the immersion cooling system as you can see there's enclosure enclosure located within the uh, frame of the rack system and as you can see here these are 20 miners uh, inside so quite a density and the, uh, as you can see, controllers are on the top of the miners, so they don't oc uh, occupy the space. We, we removed the uh, panels which are housing that controllers in the normal, normal environment. And we also, and we also removed the, all the fans, all the covers which are not needed. And uh, as you can see also, the power supplies will be located outside of the immersion buff. Because power supplies will not, no, not uh, need uh, so much cooling as the miners uh, will require. So we will basically remove them uh, and put it on top of the miners or outside of the enclosure, so it's you know uh, so it's convenient to to operate them. So that was about the special preparation of the uh, of the ASIC miners for the for the immersion cooling system. As you can see, it's not really uh, complicated. Simple steps, and you are done. Thank you. Follow up uh, our sales channels, and we will show you how the immersion system for crypto mining works. Cheers.